And good morning, Minecraft. This is Mr. Kassarian. And this is Tekren. And today we are teaching Tekren Thermal Expansion. Yep, because last episode we did Tinker's Construct. Indeed. So, Tekren, can yes. you make some opaque fluid ducts? Opaque. Two copper, fluid. one duct. Okay. You should just need one set of them. Two copper and one lead. So, for those of you guys who remember thermal expansion from previous versions of Minecraft but may not have fluid uct, not act, you remember that fluid ducts and item ducts required hardened glass. Well, now we have a version that's opaque that only requires ingots. <coughs> so, it's a bit of an earlier game access point. And it is very nice. Indeed. And also make yourself two sets of item ducts, please. Item ducts. Which are tin and nether lead? No, oh, just lead. So, two tin, one lead. Oh, wait, how many am I supposed to be getting? Two sets? Two sets. And in the meantime, guys, I am making some more machine frames. Even though we're running a wee bit low on glass now. Yeah, I really hate making machine frames. You kind of get used to it. And we are one glass short, as always. Okay, let me get... Uh, eight of those. I have some coal on me, so I'll just chuck this in my furnace next, right behind the house. Unless I already have some glass in there. I already have some glass in there. Well, I'll make up that eight sand anyways. <laughs> so, thermal expansion. Um, it used to be sort of an add-on, if you would, to build craft. However, now it's its own mod. Yes, and it is a very, very good mod, and one of my favorites for early game or processing. Simply because it doesn't require making lots of plates. Or lots of rubber. Right. Okay. Or, you know, working on making lots and lots of ridiculous energy sources. Or, for that matter, you know, yeah. <laughs> Which Finding would be what Kassarian is doing now. Finding a mechanical engineer so that they can explain to you the concepts that you need to do a mod spotlight, that's fun. Yeah, how did you uh, do on that, by the way? Um, pretty well. Um, I actually sent it off to Rika a couple days ago, and they responded that they actually really, really liked it. Well, that's good. It's a four-part spotlight at this point. God. So we're just going to make two bricks, and Nick, if you want to look up the recipe for a pulverizer, a redstone furnace. Pulverizer... Uh, I need two copper gears and a redstone reception. The copper that we're running dangerously low on. I'm going to make a few pistons. And I'm going to make and our... And that, that was an issue. Um, do you mind replacing that barrel? What did you... How did you... I'm not sure. Do you have it in your inventory? No. <clears throat> how did you... Okay, let's call that a bug. Yeah. And I'll just replace that on camera, guys. So let's get a better barrel. You wouldn't happen to remember how much cobblestone we had in that thing, right? A lot. It's all in my inventory. Oh. It, it just kind of pops the better barrel off. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> okay. I'm going to be making a leadstone energy cell, which is the way that you store power in thermal expansion. Now, we already have our power gen, which are these four steam dynamos. Oh, I should probably switch myself back into recipe mode now. Thank you very much. Let's get... So we need four lead. 
And if you guys are wondering why these are registering as IC2 materials, that would actually be because... Um, oh, you're using that crafting station, aren't you? Uh, yep. Now I am working on making the copper gears. Awesome. That would actually be because the... Okay, we need redstone block. Um, you know what I'm just going to do? We're just going to do we this. We need more crafting stations in here. That's what I'm doing right now. Problem solved. Thank you. Okay. So, what, where was I? Oh, right. Energy storage. Um, this, the leadstone energy cells allow energy storage for thermal expansion. That's not the one I'm using. That's what I'm using. Really? We're somehow managing to use up every crafting station in this entire place. That is because we are talented. Yes, indeed. So, the Leadstone Energy Cell is the first tier of power storage. Unlike previous versions, there we go, where we basically had to... Three copper. Oy. Where you basically had to get pretty far up the production tier before you could actually work on anything useful. Do we have... Tell me we have some... We, we now have a pulverizer. Do we have any Electrum already? I do not even know what Electrum is yet. Okay, Electrum is an alloy of silver and gold. Normally, you pulverize up the metals, you'd mix them We together. have the redstone conductance coils. Oh, we already have the conductance coils? Yes. Oh, okay. I was going to show them something cool, but okay. Conductance coil. Which is what you make with the Electrum. So, conductance coil, let's do an energy cell. Normally, you'd grind it up to dust, mix it together, smelt it up. You can also make that alloy in the smeltery. So what am I making after the pulverizer? Because I'm done with the pulverizer. Do you have the furnace? No, I do not. Redstone energy furnace. That's why there are the two bricks sitting in there. Uh, the pulverizer is the equivalent of the IC2 macerator. It grinds up your ores, doubles them into dust, but it can also give you byproducts. So if I look up the... Well, I can't really look it up this way. Um, in essence, it is an ore doubler plus a bit of a bonus. You get a percentage chance of getting bonus items coming out on the other side. Get our energy cell. I'm going to make an energetic infuser while he's working on that. Uh, do we want this infuser or do we want the... No, nah, let's actually make him the... Oh, gosh. Magma. Let's see what the magma crucible requires. Uh, another brick. I don't want to make that now. <laughs> Let's. We can save that for later. Let's make the liquid transposer for him. The liquid transposer. Now we just need a redstone, and then we have that done. And there's our redstone furnace. Fluid transposer. Okay, now that you have the furnace, um, you used up the last... No, I have the machine frame. The Make another machine frame, and which reminds me that I have the glass. Hold on for a second. And make another machine frame and make an energetic infuser. So the liquid transposer is actually a pretty cool machine. What it allows you to do is move liquids in and out of various materials. That's a conductance coil. Of various containers without actually blowing up that container. So for those of you who already know how cells and or capsules work, you would know that you can right-click a capsule onto a tank or place it in the tank's inventory. But the second you do, you use up that tank. Yeah. You use up that container, excuse me. I can talk, I swear. The downside to that is, of course, that you lose the item. You lose the, the fluid container that you used. Now, a liquid transposer <coughs> can remove the item, the liquid, from that container without destroying the container you're using. Which is quite handy if you're using a mod like, let's say, Greg Tech. That likes to add 20 billion different types of fluids. And you yoink out those copper gears. Let's put them in there. We get ourselves a fluid transposer. How we are that? going to need more copper. We are definitely going to need more copper. How is that because energetic infuser? 
Uh, the Iron Jack Infuser is currently having the Leadstone Energy Cell being the only thing that's made for it so far. Okay. Well, you have... You need two transmissions and two copper gears. I can make the copper gears if you can make the other things. The two transmission and reception? Okay. Yep. All right. So let me pull this out. I'm just going to make a whole bunch of cobblestone gears that I will place somewhere so that we have at least that. That works. Yeah. And it just kind of went into the rotary craft stuff because, yep. There's that. And then there's the glass in there so you can make the machine frame. Because you hate making them? Yes. I love how that's your reasoning. Well, it's good enough reasoning. Alright, so let's put the iron there and our glass like so. Machine frame and energetic infuser. If you want to yoink that. Yep. Alright, so let's go over to your base. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Now, my base is all the way over here. I placed it in between the mountain and our plains, uh, in between last episode and this episode. And Kess was kind enough to light it up for me in the most non-OCD lighting that you can ever think of. I was rushing. <laughs> well, that's what you get. Okay, so let's break up this stuff down here. Um, or you could put your machines over there. That works, too. Yes, which is what I did. Let me just get... Um, the way you built your house is going to drive me absolutely ballistic. Yeah, well, the way that you placed my torches is going to drive me ballistic. Touche. And I built my house like this because, well, I didn't want to have to clear the air. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got the pulverizer. Oh, okay. So the first less of thermal expansion. Remember how thermal expansion machines can output on certain sides? Yes. And input on certain sides? They can actually output and input to each other without pipes. Well, that's nice. Which is why you actually want your pulverizer next to your redstone furnace. Okay. And just for the sake of this, we're actually going to put some space underneath these. So that we can have the output chest at the end, correct? Correct, and all the machines having their outputs down. So if you want to open up the pulverizer. So you can shift left click on the center of that configuration tab that shows the face of the machine to turn everything off. That I did not know, which is nice. Uh, output, you can I do, want yep, both. Both to, the, to that side, yep. And but then want, wouldn't it get caught if the redstone furnace... It'll is throttle. Caught? Oh. It'll actually stop using power if it can't keep producing. Okay. Um, and then input I want from the top. Yes. And you also want a top input on your redstone furnace. And I'd recommend a... Bottom, bottom output. Yep. And then locking that, yeah. You have two big hooks in the kitchen. There we go. And let's put down our energetic infuser right next to that. And let's just lock... There we go. Yep. And what other machines do you have anymore? What machines? Do you have any more machines? No. Okay. Uh, we're just going to put your aqueous, your fluid transposer right there. Okay. I've set its output to bottom. So, okay. Let's explain how these, what these machines do after we get the power hooked up. So let me... Oh, gosh. Okay. Let me figure out how the heck I'm going to do this. Um, how many fluid ducts do you have? I have 25 item ducts and 6 fluid ducts. <gasps> Why don't you make another set of fluid ducts? We'll be right back because I'm trying to figure out how to arrange this whole thing. Yep, because my base is fun. Indeed. And we're back, guys. All right, so let's get Nick set up here. So we're going to put our aqueous accumulator right here. 
And you're going to see that's going to fill up wa with nicely with water. And then, Nick, do you have a couple more flu ducks? Yes, I still have both. All right, if you just want to chuck those at me for a second. There they are. There we go. And, okay, cell goes there, which means flu ducks come out of here like that. Okay. So now let's get back around to the front, and we can actually configure this thing. So we made all the stuff in advance. You guys saw us crafting it. And this is just going to be a fairly basic early system for Nick. Yes, because when... that's all I need for right now. So we can actually go and set up a quarry. Oy. You and your quarries. I'm sorry, but quarries are amazing. All right, so let's put a steam dynamo in there. And you can see it's going to fill up nicely with water. I already put the lever down. I'm going to run and go and get us coal unless you already have. I do not have coal, but honestly... I'm running! We probably should do a railcraft thingy first. Well, we can use a little bit of coal right now. We've got plenty. All right. So are we put our two hoppers in so that they're inputting into the right spots. And we're going to place a ch iron chest on top of the pulverizer just to make sure that you know that pulverizer will be probably the most used machine and a standard chest on top of the redstone furnace okay I find the coal now we already set these machines it's in a barrel I am. to be outputting in the correct area now all we have to do is see on the item duct that blue arrow that means the item the item duct will try and insert into the machine let's flip it around to red so that it comes out but leave it on blue for the iron chest. That way, if we drop an item in, like a piece of cobblestone, no, it would always help, though, if we actually had some power running. Oh, that's something I never like to see in the chat. What? Nick, oh, God. We're... And we're outputting to the back, and as you see, we're now active and gaining RF, and this thing is smelting. Now, what it should do as soon as we're done, it's done smelting, is it should output to the bottom which, of course, we can't see because these are opaque item ducts. And we should see it eventually show up in this chest. There we go. I need to swap that. I do not like opaque. Well, once you get an induction furnace, you are free to swap it all you like. Well, that is what I'm going to do. <sighs> okay. Now, the downside is, though the steam dynamo is auto-throttling, so right now it's producing 80 RF per tick. You can see that on this display tab here. Yep. When it starts to fill up, it'll actually throttle itself down all the way to one RF per tick, and it'll decrease the amount of coal it consumes. Unfortunately, these things are pretty coal hungry. Which is why we are going to make a coal, co coal coke furnace. Yep, a coke oven. Yes. Yes. And all we need for that is a bunch of sand and a bunch of bricks. Now, we already have some bricks. And, and I, I made sure to have a lot of sand. And I really don't feel like... How many bricks do we already have? Nine. If you want to grab those. And do you want to actually do the math on how many bricks we need? Because um, we need 27 bricks, right? Because it's a 3x3x3 three by three by three minus 1. Just give me a second. All right. Well, Nick uh. does... <laughs> well, Nick does math. Um, right. So we're going to be back in a couple minutes once we figure out what we need, how much we need, and we get it cooked up. Be right back, guys. All right, so we got ourselves a Coke oven. It is going to very, very slowly turn this coal. I think it takes a full real-time minute. Per coal. Per coal. But the best part about it is that it makes it so that instead of, you know, eight, or the effectively eight, uh, transactions in a furnace, Cold Coke actually does 32. And, and it's for free. Right. And, okay, it's not, for some reason, it's not actually showing the plug-in data. But it basically, at least with IC2, it doubles the amount of power it produces in an IC2 generator, and I'm fairly certain it does something fairly similar in the Steam Dynamo as well. Most likely. So let's cover up this floor, and Nick mentioned he wanted to build something else. I did. The induction smelter? Oh, yes, because I enjoy making it so that I can actually see my items. Because I used to, or I've been playing Buildcraft since uh, the beta 1 3. <laughs> 
edition Indeed. since before Pistons even came out. And that bugs me. Yep. So while you can't see those and you're making the induction smelter, which I just showed to the audience, don't forget you can also uh, get the invar out of the smeltery. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Now, we're going to do something else while he's doing that. Can you make up some extra invar, too? Uh, how much? Um, actually, not yet. I don't need it yet. Never mind. So let's check out leadstone. And let's see what we can make that's leadstone, right? What's this? A flux capacitor. Ooh. The flux capacitor is a cool item, and I actually got some of it. You're going to want to smelt down some uh, nether rack into nether bricks as well. Okay. The cool thing about it is it's basically a battery for thermal expansion. And you can charge it up to that energetic infuser that I had Nick craft, which is the reason I had him craft it. Where now, is nickel? Uh, nickel is ferrous. Hey. Let's get some of this sulfur and some of this sulfur. And how much? How many do we need? Eh, 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 eh. Okay, so we're going to need one, two. We'll do it for that as well, maybe? Nah, we don't need that. Okay. So we'll just do three. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the sulfur in, and then we're going to need two I'm lead. Making, uh enough invar for eight iron ingots and four ferrous ingots. Okay. So, I'm not entirely sure. Right. I know that's going to be quite a bit, though. Indeed. So, we'll put the lead in, and let's get ourselves that redstone out. Times three times four is twelve. And apparently we can't use Natura Sulfur for this. Which means that Natura Sulfur is going in the trash bin. Oh, you're making the flux capacitors right now. Indeed. Uh, where did our... There they went. So now we have ourselves some leadstone flux capacitors. What are we going to do with them? Well, that's a good question. Let me just wait until this thing's actually smelted up. Because that's going to be fun. Have you already done the gears? Uh, that's what I'm doing right now. Okay. What else do you need for that? Have you smelted up the... Nether rack? No, I have not. Oh, that's I'm sorry. I need that's for the magma crucible. Wrong item. Yeah, I was kind of concerned. No, um, that was that was me going. Wait a second, that's the wrong piece of equipment I need. Yep. While he's doing that, we're gonna do something a little bit more entertaining, which is that we're gonna make some new swords already. Already? Nah, actually, we're not gonna make those swords yet. Now that I think about it. Yeah, because didn't we just make sorts? Yeah, and we don't have Thomcraft up and running yet. No, we don't. So we're uh, gonna have to we're gonna have to hold off on the awesome thing I was gonna do, but we still have these flux capacitors. And what I think we should do is I want to check materials in you, and I'll actually be right back, guys. All right, so I'm just pulverizing some obsidian down into pulverized obsidian, because that's pretty obvious. You can also use obsidian dust and obsidian that was ground down in a macerator if you are using ic2 thank forge or dictionary because it is god okay yep. so now let's come over here to the induction smelter and nick's first response was i'm confused i am still very confused because well it's got two input slots yes because it is a alloy machine basically you can cook normal items in here, uh, or rather ores down, and you put in the ore here and the sand and sand in the second slot, and then it doubles it with a chance to produce slag or rich slag. Rich slag, you can put that back in and then triple your next output. Well, that's nice. Indeed. Now, because the way this is set up, if you move for a split second, I'm knocking out the floor, we can actually just turn off that thing's output with our crescent hammer. Remember how one click switches it to down? Well, one click, the next click breaks the connection entirely. So we're gonna just going to set this thing, both of its slots, to output into the iron chest directly. Now to get the hardened glass, we just put our pulverized obsidian and our lead in, and this thing will run. Quite happily, in fact. And each operation gets us two hardened glass. Now... Nick, if you want to go below this thing, you can rip out all these item ducts, and we can actually upgrade them. Okay. Uh, I need that. Okay. The, didn't I make you? There's one at the workshop for you. 
<laughs> and he's off. Okay, so this is running. Um, this thing is out of coal, so let's throw some coal coke in. And this should last significantly longer, to be honest with you guys. Okay, one more thing to explain about thermal expansion. Notice how this lever's off, but this is running. The way this machine is set is on this configuration tab. It can either ignore redstone. I can flip this all I want. It's not going to do anything. Low redstone signal. When I flip the lever to on, the engine turns off. Or high signal, where it requires a redstone output. Now, notice something cool. When you turn the engine off completely, it actually saves the rest of the coal it's burning. So, unlike a furnace or I think Icy Tooth stuff does this, you don't have to wait entirely until it's done to turn it off. I'm back in. Uh, what do I do with the hardened glass? All right. You took all that stuff out? Yep. So, put it in your crafting station. One piece of it. With six item ducts. So like that? Yep, and you get the clear ones. Woo! And don't forget to reset the uh, configuration options on these. Well, you're going to have to do that, because I still don't have a crescent hammer yet. Oh. I thought you just ran back to the workshop to... I did. There should have been one on the tool rack. Well, you didn't tell me to get that. I, I said, get the... And this is what happens when you have an SMP series, everyone. Yep. You get very angry with your co-host because he doesn't explain things to you. The other thing you could do, by the way, is you can throw bones in the pulverizer to get six bone meal. See? Distractions. Um, but, well, that's, that's a bit much. So let's just reset these to down, set this to off, and there we go. We have There's one more machine we want to put in here. One more! Oh, there we go. Okay, so the way he has this set up now is the other thing you can do is if you just want to pulverize something and send it to that chest automatically, you just turn off that input and activate that input. Well, there we go. Ow. Ow. Baby zombie. Bloody baby zombies. And there we go. And now we should also be able to see this thing is now throttling itself down. Notice it's now down to 22. And because yeah, that's a bit much. <laughs> what? The uh, six bone meal from one bone. Yeah. Just don't forget to reset your uh, configuration option in the pulverizer to re-output to the redstone furnace. Yep. Otherwise, you'll end up pulling a me and going, wait, why isn't it working right? And we're going to turn that off and notice that it's actually saving the rest of that burn. I believe it saves it uh, infinitely. Well, that's nice. Indeed. So that's a good way to save some fuel. Now, what were we going to do? Oh, right. We're going to do two more things. So let's go back down to the workshop where we have all our T-Con gear. And the reason why I'm able to move so fast in the water... Oh, really God. Of Son of a gun. Did you get shot? Yep. I'll be right back, guys. And we're back. And Nick's done some uh, landscaping. Yep. I had a bit of fun filling in our little issue that we had with skeletons. Yeah. All right. Let's do this. So, Nick, what we're going to do is, if you want to join me in the uh, the workshop, the storage room. Yep. The hub. It was called the hub. Yeah. Basically, is it's spare about the same space in between my base and yours. Uh, I don't have any spare alumite. Okay, fine. Oh, wait, I do. You I think. still have a arrow in your back. Eh. So we're, I'm just going to repair up my sword here. And then I'm going to mix it with a flux capacitor. Which allows me to charge it using RF. Uh, do you need my broadsword so that you can do the same? Yes, Mike? please. Or I could just give you the flux capacitor and... Or, or you can just put it in there. And now <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing with my pickaxe. Actually, I'm going to pretty much waste a steel to do it to get it to full. But HSLA steel is wicked easy to make. 
And my pickaxe is just, you know, not damaged at all. Indeed. So put that on. Thank you. Now yeah. I'm going to go and use my air jack. Whatever it's called. And that's why I had you make one. And that could be done with any material. Now there's one more thing I want to show you guys. And it is pretty cool. Nick, could you put some um, water in your fluid transposer for me? Yes. Because for those of you guys who know, I have this hatchet and a shovel. And I don't use them that often. You know, it's not a I'm using it every single time sort of a deal. Now, notice you can still use your, your swords and stuff when they're not charged, but they'll take durability damage as is standard. So just watch out for that. And it's kind of tricky to get them to repair, so be careful. Okay, Creeper. Yeah, have fun with that. We uh, need to get this area lit up a little bit. Yeah, I just kind of ride the water. Or, for that matter, we should just... At some point, get a magnum torch. All right, water in your fluid Not transposer. I'm working on that. All right. No, you have to put it in there. Flip uh, it to that mode. There we go. All right, and now what we're gonna do is let's see here. I need. Where did my bucket go? It. Is it went... eat the bucket? Nope, it went into the iron chest. Uh, that's right. Now, let's do this. Let me grab some more water, because we'll need it. Are you making mossy cobblestone? Yes, I am. Do you know why I'm making mossy cobblestone? No, I do not. Oh, it is to make your moss. To make a ball of moss, to make these things auto-repair. Yes. So let me come back, guys, when I have enough mossy cobble. All right, so... Just the last thing we're going to do is get ourselves some balls of moss. So Follow we moss. Finish up. So we can finish up our modifications. And we can wrap this episode. Because we are actually already over time. And uh, yeah, oops. Oh well. Yeah, we, we tend to go over when we have a bit of fun on our systems. Exactly. All right, so let me get over here. And just something to note, guys, this episode is recorded in two, was recorded in two halves. One half of this was actually before the next episode's recorded. The second half is after that episode's recorded. Because I thought that Nick wouldn't be around, and Nick thought that I wouldn't be around, basically. Yeah. So, basically, we were actually expecting to not be able to finish this episode until about a week from the original start date. Yep. And we were able to finish it in the same day. Indeed. So I'm going to get my auto repair on my shovel and auto repair on my hatchet. And there should and be another... I'm going to be putting both of those in there so I can get that as well. Yep. I thought you already had a shovel and a hatchet. No, I don't have a shovel and a hatchet. I have a broadsword and a pickaxe. Because uh, it doesn't really matter on your broadsword and your pick that you have auto repair because you have charging. Well, now I have a auto repair as well. Okay, awesome. Um, oh, well. <laughs> this stuff repairs pretty slowly. So you do want to watch out for that, guys. It, it repairs pretty slowly, and it's better in the daylight. Um, which is why I put it on the two tools that I don't use quite as much. Just because. Oh, jeez. My uh, bit of fun exercise on the uh, ravine kind of went a bit further than the ravine. You made a mob spawner down there, didn't you? No, I, I didn't make a mob spawner, but I kind of... Uh... Well, actually, I did make a mob spawner down there, come to think of it. Because <laughs> I forgot, I didn't actually go all the way down. I just went most of the way down. So, yeah, there, there's a pretty big open space underneath here. Awesome. All right, so on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to wrap this episode. This has been Mr. Kasarian. And this has been Techrim messing around with the physics. All right, everyone. Happy mining.